today we are going to share with you the things that I would never do at Disneyland ever again. And I'll tell you why. So let's get going. And castle. First order of business is getting something to eat. So we're coming to Maurice's Treats. This is another hybrid vlog tips video. And the topic for today's tips are things that I'll never do again at Disneyland. And one of those things is try to predict the weather or think that I know how Southern California weather operates because this year it has just been completely thrown out the window. It's actually raining right now. You can't tell, but I am feeling drops on my hands and it, it, it's June. It is still, still raining. Here we have the spinach and feta roll. This is one of the newer items that uh, popped on the menu when they changed their menu in May of 2023. We're gonna give that a try. And here is the chocolate croissants. Now they've had the chocolate croissant before, but it looked more kind of like a tiger tail before, like a little bread twist, like the cheddar garlic bagel twist. I don't know why they changed it to this, but this is how the chocolate croissant looks now. I think I prefer the ham and cheese one we've had from there before, but it's still really good. I like savory things, so. I agree. I thought that spinach and feta roll was actually pretty good. I have no complaints about it, but I really love spinach. We got here at 9.30 this morning, so now we're just trying to figure out what we want to do to start our day. Usually I'm all about rope dropping, but we are staying for two days, so we decided to come in a little bit later the first day. The reason why I'm all for rope dropping is because it's not even 10 o'clock, and this is the line for Pirates of the Caribbean right now. It says it's only a 30 minute wait, but it looks pretty slammed. Now something that I said I would never do again, but we're about to go do it and throw the idea for this video out the window, is wait in a line longer than 30 minutes. I don't think it's really necessary here at Disneyland, but uh, James really wants to come over here and do Indiana Jones. And 35 isn't terrible, so we're gonna do it, I guess. This line is actually moving really, really good though. Like, really good. We made it inside with relative ease. But uh, we'll keep the timer going and see how long the, the total wait is. Usually once you get past the Genie Plus merge, it's actually not too bad. I think about, we're not quite there yet, but... Um, not bad. <laughs> that's not 35. No. I'll take it. Yeah. James is driving. Oh no. oh no. We're in for a bumpy ride. I will take the Legend of Time. It is your destiny. Snakes. Are on your own. So why do I say you should never wait more than 30 minutes for a ride? Well, generally speaking here at Disneyland, the average wait time for any given ride, and I mean any given ride with the exception of a few, like Rise of the Resistance, is gonna be that 30 minutes. Sure, it's gonna be longer. Different times of the day, you'll find it at 50. The first thing in the morning, late at night, you might find it at five. So the average is gonna, you know, balance out to about 30. Uh, around 10 a.m., 30. 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., 30 minutes is where you're gonna find a lot of the bigger attractions. So you can ride them, you know, then. What I usually recommend doing is riding bigger attractions early in the morning, later at night, and then reserving the smaller dark rides for in the afternoon because they don't ever get above 30 at their max. Like max, max, max is 30. They generally hang around 20. Next up, we're coming to do Jungle Cruise. Don't forget there are two lines in this ride. Two lines and the left line is the shorter line. Left is best is my motto here at Disneyland for any ride that has a split line. There's a few exceptions to that, like Small World being one of them, but generally left is best. Today we're going to warn you about maintain your hands on the speed and like this. It's the eighth wonder of the world, the beautiful, the colossal, the mysterious, for lunch, I'm coming over here to the Little Red Wagon, and I mobile ordered. That's the standby line. Yeah, just mobile order. You don't have to stand in that line. And honestly, that's pretty short because it's only 10.55 at the moment. Now we're going to get some lunch here at Little Red Wagon Corn Dogs. While we're waiting, let's talk about my next thing that I'm never going to do again. And I'm going to break it again right now. And that is get a corn dog or a hot dog or pizza or chicken tenders 
or burger here at Disneyland. Honestly, there's so many better things to eat and my order just got called already. So uh, to be continued. And here is a look at my corn dog from the Little Red Wagon. This is just a standard corn dog. I actually recommend going to Corn Dog Castle over at Disney California Adventure to get a hot link corn dog. But as a vlogger, I have to get a lot of food that I wouldn't necessarily normally get because I need footage for you guys. They have a lot of really other great options throughout the park that's not pizza, chicken, and that sort of thing. I did, however, get to order this mixed berry wagon aid which uh, I didn't know that they sold specialty drinks. So I was like, ooh, I gotta try that. Let's try the Wagonade. Yeah, yeah. I don't like the fruit polyps and things. I think the straw was down too though. That's better. Pretty good. Basically just a mixed berry drink. And now the corn dog. Yeah, pretty standard corn dog. Nothing fancy or special about it over here at the Little Red Wagon. Again, I think there's better food at Disneyland. In fact, Amy's getting one of those better food items I'm gonna show you in two seconds for you guys. Whoa! I don't think we've ever gotten this before. That looks really good. Plated nicely too. Why don't you tell us what it is? So I got the trio of street tacos. So it's a chicken taco, a beef taco, and a cauliflower taco. So I have no idea what to expect for the cauliflower taco but it looks like it's seasoned nicely. Um, and then it came with the rice and beans. See, that's that's the type of food I'm talking about that you should get instead of hot dogs, hot dogs and or chicken hamburger. tenders. Chicken tenders, yeah. I should probably mention that uh, we're eating at Rancho Del Zicalo, if you didn't know that. Another thing that I don't really do and probably never will, and that is go land by land around the park. A lot of you have actually made comments on our videos like wow you guys seem to ping pong around the park a lot uh, why don't you just you know go land by land and while it might be less walking to do that it is not as efficient in terms of rides uh, for instance pirates of the caribbean 45 minute wait back there right now big thunder mountain railroad 55 minute wait 20 minutes ago big thunder was 30. it went from 30 to 55 minutes if i were to just go ride it now because i was sitting right next to big thunder eating lunch I would have wasted 25 minutes. You know, if I wait a little bit, it'll probably go back down to 30 minutes. Tiana's Palace coming over here to the French Market area. It used to be French Market, and it's going on right back here. But what we're going to do instead is go over here to the New Orleans Square Frontierland train station. We're going to ride the train. It's a five-minute wait. It says lowest wait in the park. Because that's exactly what we do. We chase the low waits throughout the park. There's no sense in waiting in a 55-minute line when I can wait in a five-minute line. Beloved critters on fun filled adventures. Tigger! <laughs> T I double gut er! There is the revered Indian shaman sharing his stories with those in the great river valley below. Well, Splash Mountain is all dressed up like Walt Disney World now with their Tiana's Foods signs. And James pointed out they've got uh, some red cone type things up there in the, the uh, entranceway. As we approach the line for Rise of the Resistance entering Star Wars Galaxy's Edge here, I do want to have a talk about a few things that we never will do again with Rise of the Resistance. The first is that I will never rope drop Rise of the Resistance. And the reason for that is, based on my own personal study, I have determined that about 90% of the time, so not always, it's not a 100% guarantee, but most of the time, Rise of the Resistance's standby line is actually shorter at 9 a.m. than it is at 8 a.m. A lot of people run over here, ride at rope drop, and then before a lot of people start entering the park, it dips down a little bit. So I prefer to stand by it around 9 a.m. That's the best time to stand by Rise of the Resistance. However, the next thing that I will also never do with Rise of the Resistance is wait in line if it breaks down, which happens quite frequently. And the reason for this is that when it breaks down, it takes a minimum of 45 minutes to reboot the system. It will never be broken for five minutes and then open back up. If they, when you're standing in line, they turn off the music and the lights turn on, you can guarantee that you will be waiting for another 45 to 50 minutes before they get everything going again. Sometimes up to an hour. I did it once, never again. James wanted to come over here and ride Smugglers. It's an 85 minute wait 
So uh, he and I are just gonna <laughs> single rider it because no way I'm waiting 85 minutes for it. To single rider an attraction, you have to be a minimum of seven years old because your party will most likely be split up. And I literally walked straight into the center of the Millennium Falcon here, like no wait at all. They just paired us up right with a group right away. And we actually get to ride together, so we didn't get split up. Ah, there it is, after that train. Retrieve two containers of coaxia. This would greatly help the resistance. It's not on my official list of nevers, but never not do rope drop. <laughs> Like we always love doing rope drop, showing up for rope drop. What's rope drop? That question gets asked a lot. Rope drop is 8 a.m. They literally have ropes blocking you from entering the various lands here at Disneyland. And at 8 a.m. they drop those ropes and you can enter the various lands here at Disneyland. Right at rope drop at 8 a.m. the lines are the best. And we showed up today at about 10 a.m. And the, we haven't ridden very many things. You've seen everything we've ridden so far. And it is pushing one o'clock now and it's just because it's very busy and we miss rope drop so that's uh you know a bit of a bummer never not do rope drop my next tip was going to be to not show up for opening day of attractions like mickey's toontown we showed up there for opening day and it was a madhouse with a two-hour line just to get a picnic basket uh, but based on the amount of strollers that are over here wow it's three months after opening and Toontown is still crazy busy. Of course, the main attraction here is Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, which is a totally worth it ride that you need to check out if you've never been on before. But the reason why I say never to show up for the first day or the last day of things, be it a new ride, a new land, what have you, I actually came for opening day of Avengers Campus and I waited in a five hour long line to get into that land. Yeah, absolutely. If you've been to Avengers Campus, you know that it is not worth waiting five hours to get into that land. <laughs> and it's just not worth it to come to those days. I did not come to the last day of Splash Mountain. I had intended to, but I didn't. And I'm kind of glad that I didn't because we were looking at the wait times all day that day. And it was, it was busier than today, simply because of it being the last day of something. So if you can avoid uh, first and last days of things. Uh, it'll be a little bit less busier for you. The kids want to come to Goofy's How to Play Yard. So they want to play around a bit. Not really a tip, but something to keep in mind is that the Tale of the Lion King show over here at the Fantasyland Theater has been getting canceled a lot due to not having enough cast members to perform the show. The last couple of times I've tried to come to this show, it just hasn't really been running. We are currently eating in the Blue Bayou restaurant and our next tip is that I will never sweat or worry about getting a Blue Bayou reservation again. I won't stress out about it. So what do I mean? Well, Blue Bayou is easily the hardest reservation to get in Disneyland Park. Uh, maybe Oga's Cantina, but that's really more of a drink location, whereas um, Blue Bayou is a dinner location. And it is incredibly hard to get. Sometimes it's like reservations are gone, even at the 60 day mark at 6 a.m. If you're having trouble getting a reservation to any location, be it Blue Bayou or Lamplight, check out Mouse Dining. Mouse Dining is fantastic. You can set up alerts. Uh, I don't remember how many, but maybe like six to eight alerts you can set up for free, no, no cost. And you put in your email, you tell it what day you're looking for, what time of the day you're looking for. It'll send you an email as soon as something becomes available for your party size. And if you literally go to book it the second that you get that email, it'll probably still be available. The quicker that you can react to that email, the better. I've been able to land quite a few hard to get reservations here at Disneyland thanks to mouse dining. So uh, I won't sweat or stress about getting those hard to get reservations anymore, thanks to mouse dining. The other thing you can try with restaurants that are hard to get into is just walk up when they first open and see if you can get in. 
so that's the other thing you can try. After we finished up dinner, uh, we are headed into Fantasyland because we checked the wait times on the app and it said all of the rides up here were like 15 minute waits. It's pretty much the lowest waits in the park right now. Everyone is sitting in line waiting for the parade to start. And we decided to come to Pinocchio's Daring Journey. That's the ride that we chose. 15 minute wait posted time. I think it's probably going to be like 10. Sleep till after two. Sleep till after two. Celebrity and actors like for me. I'd feel lazy if I slept till after two. Hey, this way. Is that a Mickey? Is that a Mickey? So verdict was, was that a Mickey in the popcorn kernel or no? It's plausible. Is this Mythbusters? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna put a big plausible on top of your face. <laughs> There's the front of the Magic Happens Parade right there. We're gonna go up to Small World next. Look, it's Minnie and Chip and Dale and Goofy and Pluto! There's Small World. This is a walk-on. <laughs> wow, it's so dead. They sent that one through empty. Out of all the parades, I think this one has the most catchy music. Speaking of catchy tunes. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't really film during the ride because I was too busy looking for hidden Mickeys, of which I found none. This ride has no hidden Mickeys on it. No hidden Mickeys yet. It has a hidden Charlie Brown, and James' head just conveniently got in the way, but there it is. Hidden Charlie Brown. Literally that big mass of people that was out there watching the parade is just spilling into this line. We rode it at a really good time. Then we're gonna call it a night. I feel like this vlog isn't over though. It's gonna be a, a two day vlog and we're just gonna keep everything running. Why are we calling it a day so early? Well, because we wanna go to the hot tub back at our hotel. Hey, boys, hot Yay, tub? Yay, hot tub! People lining up for fireworks, it's only 720. I'll just add it to this video. I wasn't planning on it because most of you like hate on me when I say things like this, but you know, a never again for me is things like fireworks and not like in a bad way it's just in, in an impractical way do you know how many times we have grabbed a world of color like fast pass to go see that show and like then decided tonight. yeah like tonight and then decided eh, nah we're just gonna go back to the hotel <laughs> now we're not saying don't stay for fireworks because the fireworks here are actually really decent when we did fantastic and then got to see the fireworks it was nice i'd rather be riding rides great. personally <laughs> It is the next morning now, and today we're going to DCA, and I've got a couple of nevers to share with you over here, too. Morning rope drop line at 7.45 a.m. on June 6th. The first DCA never that I have for you is that I will never again wait standby for Radiator Springs Racers. Every single one of those people on the left is going to rope drop at Radiator Springs Racers. And the rope drop line is, is pretty much already insane. The standby never gets below 60 minutes and it is routinely up above 100 minutes. And so I just will never stand by it. Uh, what do I do? Single rider. Single rider is the key. Single rider is amazing. You just go in line and like within 15 minutes you're riding the ride and the wait time is posted at 90. It's, it's just crazy. There is actually a huge number of people heading over here to Pixar Pier this morning. Way more than normal, actually. Toy Story Midway Mania, still closed in the morning. Sometimes that's the case. So we're coming over to Incredicoaster first, which it says posted started a 15 minute wait. I doubt it's probably that long, but maybe because there were a lot of people coming over here. So it definitely wasn't 15. It was five minutes to this point right here. So not too bad. Now I'm gonna go ride Critter Carousel with Benjamin. 
Benji's in his blue armadillo. He loves the blue armadillo. It's not the one with the hidden Mickey though, but that's okay. Oh, hey, you're taller than me. Oh, now you're shorter than me. Hey, you're taller than me. Now you're shorter than me. We've completed our double swap of Incredicoaster. Since Benjamin isn't tall enough, we still gotta do swaps. And uh, that line is up to 25 minutes now. This is, this is pretty crowded. Like, I, I almost feel like this is borderline spring break crowded. Maybe even worse than spring break. Wow, it's only 8.25 in the morning. Never mind, 30. It's 8.30 in the morning and Radiator Springs Racers is a 120 minute standby wait. Yes, insane. Mr. Incredible out, doing some meet and greets over here. We were waiting for a Toy Story, didn't happen. So we're coming over here to Inside Out Emotional Whirlwind, hoping to kill a little bit more time. We're hoping to do Toy Story before it jumps up to like a 50 minute wait. Please be sure to watch that. We're gonna grow up with the family. Do the fun. Backwards. Now I am the About 8.45 and Toy Story has opened. Yeah, we're going kind of ride crazy here first thing in the morning. I do have some more tips for you, I promise. The line's sticking out of the ride already, but honestly, it's not going to get any shorter, so we might as well do it. It says it's a 25-minute wait, Ooh, but I guess we're going to do it. All right, uh, well, it was about 20 minutes, 20 minutes at this point, so five, five minutes uh, lower than the posted wait time. 18, oh, not bad. All right, I probably got a, what in the world? It's not turning right. We're like not turning for some reason. Oh, here we go. That's me. Now that we are done doing our ride throughs, we're gonna go to Pim Test Kitchen and get some breakfast. We're actually hoping to put together a breakfast video for you guys, but it's gonna take quite a few visits in order to accumulate enough breakfast items. So that'll be off a ways. So uh, just here is a sneak peek of the food that we're gonna have uh, when we're talking about the food video. This is the calculated breakfast from Pim Test Kitchen, and this is the Cinna Pim Toast, also from Pim Test Kitchen. Again, just a look at those two items. Uh, we'll talk more about them on a future breakfast video. Now the breakfast is done, we're coming over here to Mater's Junkyard Jamboree. This is a 15 minute wait. James wanted me to point out the uh, one hidden Mickey here in the queue. And there it is. Nine minutes and we're next. So not bad, not bad. James is my riding buddy. There's mommy and Benjamin. Here we go, James. Whoa! We're like 80% of the way through this video. And I've just now come up with what we're playing is a game of never will I ever. You know, never have I ever. No, we're not doing that. This is never will I ever. <laughs> and uh, we've got another one coming right now. And never will I ever again get a milkshake from Schmoozies. Every time they come out with seasonal menus here for Schmoozies, I get lulled into this, oh wow, that looks super cute, or that sounds amazing, and I want to get a milkshake. And I come over here and I get one, and it is just the most so-so milkshake that I've ever had. I mean, there are even better milkshakes here at the Disneyland Resort, like Black Chap out in downtown Disney. Wow, do they have some good milkshakes not schmoozies and i just need to put the foot down and tell myself never again and the very next one is right next door to that and that's never will i ever again wait standby for mike and sully to the rescue now this ride used to be a really manageable line ever since they've added genie plus to it the standby has been in Sane. And they have something called a buddy pass. And the cast member right here is actually holding some in his hand right now. We're gonna go ask him for them and he's going to give them to us. And so we come in via the exit and he gave us two buddy passes. This is basically single rider, but for two people. They have three rows on Monsters Inc. and we get in the third row. And there is a little bit of a line in here for it. So it's not like, you know, just immediate walk on, but it does help us get on the ride much, much faster than the posted like 45 minute wait time. 
correction, it's 55 right now. Oh. Yeah, I know. And here we go, just four minutes later. We got the handicapped car. They didn't have anybody Hello. to put in it, so it's just us. Happy birthday, Schmoozy Bro. Oh, Googly Cat. There's a kid here, a human kid. Here we go. Oh, God, no, no, no. It's moving. Oh, Hidden Mickey, Hidden Mickey on Sullivan. Hey. Just saw it. Look, 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 look. Right there, do you see it? Right there, oh, we see it. It was a Mickey. Wow. <laughs> uh, that was a tough find. Five minutes beats 55 minutes any day. <laughs> Absolutely. Buddy pass it up, folks. Buddy pass. And they were letting a lot of buddies in today. I don't know if it was just the way the groups were, but um, the last time I did buddy pass and there were that many people in line, it took a little bit longer than five minutes. The next never will I ever is to stay at the Grand Californian Hotel. Or really any of the Disney hotels here at Disneyland. And I just, every time that I look into doing it, I can never pull the trigger. So I'm just gonna add it to the never will I ever list because <laughs> I don't know if I ever will. I stare at the price and it just, I can't ever justify it. I can't. I'll go to Aulani and I'll justify the price because man, that view is amazing. Insert footage right now. <laughs> I'm gonna make you wanna go to Aulani by the time that I'm through with this video. But man, it, just here, Mm -mm. I'd rather stay at a $200 hotel off property. It's just a place to sleep. I'm in the park the whole time. I don't need a fancy hotel. As gorgeous as these places look. I mean, yeah, it looks amazing, but I'm sorry. I can't justify the cost. Would you ever do a staycation though, where we didn't even go into the theme parks at all and we just went and enjoyed the resort and enjoyed the pool? No. I suppose if we never went into the park, that's a totally yeah. different story. Speaking of Alani, right across the way, aloha! We came over to the Redwood Challenge Trail. The kids are gonna run into the fire, uh, Firefox. No, that's a browser. Flying Fox. I was actually surprised that I shared this in a recent video and some folks were like, I didn't even know that was there. This is an awesome, huge, massive play area for kids. It's Dale. Hi. Oh, he needed to get a jumping start. <laughs> Look at that smile. <laughs> That's joy right there. Next, they're gonna go over to the slides over here. There's literally so much here though. Tons of net climbs, bridges. There's a bouncy bridge right over there. You know, the kind of, if you jump on, you lose your balance and fall over. And these slides. And we're coming over here to the Cozy Cone Motel to get a churro. Today is National Churro Day. And the first Cozy Cone is the Churro Cone. And here we go. This is what we got from the Churro Cone. This is a chocolate hazelnut, AKA Nutella, and strawberry churro. Uh, the strawberry is dehydrated. I was, I mean, I guess fresh wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. Whenever I heard the description, I was like, how does that work? But dehydrated makes a lot more sense. Very tasty, though so not sure I got any of the dehydrated strawberry. And while we were here, I just decided to grab a bacon mac and cheese cone from Chili Cone Queso, cone number three. That's gonna be my lunch. Our breakfast was kind of like a late breakfast. So I don't need a whole lot of food for lunch and this chili cone queso or rather bacon mac and cheese cone will do just fine. We were just walking along and Benjamin goes, I found a hidden Mickey. And we're like, what? Where? Did you find a hidden Mickey? Yeah, yeah you wanna show us where? <laughs> oh. We're gonna do one final thing here at DCA before we hop over to Disneyland. And that's gonna be Mickey's Philhar Magic. Our last Never Will I Ever is actually gonna be here at the Disneyland Hotel. In specific, it's gonna be Goofy's Kitchen or any character breakfast, be it Storytellers or anything. Uh, I went to Makahiki, the character breakfast at Disney's Aulani. It's the same price as Goofy's Kitchen. And while the food was good, it was extremely overpriced, $200 for a character breakfast for my family of four. I just don't think it's worth it. 
after spending so much money for what? <laughs> really, you were paying for the characters. But here at Disneyland, you can see characters for free. There are characters all over the parks. If you hang out in Fantasyland over the course of an hour or two, you'll run into at least a dozen. Hello. Good morning. Hey, Good morning, friend. Look who we found. It's Peter Pan, Wendy, and Captain Hook. Oh, and look, right behind us is Snow White. And you can walk up to all of them and get their signatures, that sort of thing. If you're looking for the Fab Five, which is what you're going to find at these character breakfasts, you can go up to Mickey's Toontown. Sometimes down in the entrance area of Main Street USA, they have those characters. You can meet them without having to pay for that experience because the food, while good, just doesn't meet the price tag. Well, one of my favorite things to do here in downtown Disney is see that Platinum Mickey statue there in the background. The magic band sets it off and it makes Mickey talk and he goes like, it's me, Mickey, or hiya, pal. And all these people are just standing around. They're taking photos. Of course, he's been quiet the whole time. I walk up there and I activate Mickey and they're like, what? Oh, he talks. He talks. Oh, how, how do you make it do it again? <laughs> It's hilarious to watch. I do it every time. It's a small, small pleasures in life. We've been writing some stuff without actually vlogging about it because we're towards the end of our little stay here. And, um, you know, I'm just trying to enjoy some time with the family. But we just noticed that Rise of the Resistance is 165 minutes. That's the highest I have ever, ever seen it. And, I mean, we're talking about in the middle of spring break. I never saw it that high. So, wow. Pirates dropped down to a 25 minute wait, so we hopped in line. As always, we're timing it. We'll let you know what the actual is. Here we go, we're getting on. And how much? 15 minutes, posted wait time 25. out that over here in the treasure map scene, the parrot is missing. I assume it's a parrot, a bird of some kind. We don't see him. I do, however, see Captain Jack's compass. Well, that's it for our time here at Disneyland today, sharing with you the things that I probably wouldn't ever do at Disneyland again. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please hit the like and subscribe button. And if you want to see more Disneyland content, go ahead and click this video to keep watching. We will see you again next time.